Hi, this is Jerome Pepin. Welcome to the Amy Quick Start video. We'll start off with a quick tour of the user manual. You'll have a chance to see how it's constructed and how you can take advantage of it. Then we'll do some setup work, define your company defaults, we'll add a couple of customers, add a little bit of inventory, and then we'll jump into the application and uh, create your first quote. We'll add some squawks. We'll be sending a quote to your customer and collecting a prepayment and then we'll convert that quote to a work order and we'll use the Amy software to work the job. Picking parts, logging labor hours, performing inspections. When the job's complete we'll uh, create a weight and balance report, send the final invoice and then we're done. This uh, video will take about eight to ten minutes so let's get started. The link to the user manual is below in the comments and to be honest the best bet is to just go open up the user manual, fool around with it and see how it's put together. On the left side you see a table of contents. Everything is linkable. Uh, look at how your mouse behaves as you move the mouse over images, as you move it over text strings. That There's a lot of inter-document linking. There are videos embedded. There are images that will expand and contract to help illustrate the concepts. It's a really well put together document so just fool around with it and I think in a couple of minutes you'll, you'll be quite uh, fluent in using the tool. So I'm going to take you through the quick start that's actually in the manual and I'm going to show you how to operate the software using the software. Let's go to settings, setup, info and defaults and the first tab is the company address information. We want to have this filled out because this is what will appear on all the printed documents. So take a moment and enter in your company information correctly. The company data tab allows you to set up the seed values for your next work order number, your next quote number, your next PO, as well as uh, information about your um, company certificates. Rates and fees are used for calculating costs within the work order, so you want to get that correct. Notification allows you to define who gets the low stock alert emails. Tool crib setup, document footers, and document headers, all great features, but in this video, I'm going to skip it. Let's go to Jobs, Customers. We'll use the Actions menu, and you have the option of importing customers. Typically, this would be via Excel spreadsheet and it may be an export that you created from QuickBooks. We have a template you cut and paste into the template and you can upload all your customers in, in one shot. In this case we're going to add our customer manually. So we're going to enter our information for Mr. Anderson. We'll add a second customer using the FAA lookup. Using the search filters we'll see if we can find if um, Agent Smith owns an aircraft. We'll look at the details of this aircraft. This is the information straight from the FAA which is generally quite accurate and let's create a new customer. For demonstration purposes I'll tune up this data just a little bit and I'll type really really fast. Customer Agent Smith has been added to our system. Uh, we have a customer portal. I'm not going to go over that in this video but check that one out. That's a really great feature. Let's now add two inventory lines. Similar to customers, I can import my inventory into Amy. Uh, we have a spreadsheet template that you can use. But for purposes of this video, we're going to add the two line items by hand. I'm going to jump ahead to the completed form and point out a couple of things of interest. Weight is used in weight and balance calculations. Reorder point ensures you don't run out of stock in the future. And cost and price information drives quoting and invoicing. Let's add a second part. And again I'll jump to the end and point out a couple of things of interest. Descriptions and serial numbers will show up on all your documents, so be accurate. We've added our two customers and our two inventory items. Let's go ahead and create a quote. So let's go to customer Agent Smith and get started on that quote. From the customer list, I'll search for Smith and click the Add New Quote button. My quote summary information is now complete. Actually, this quote was supposed to be for Mr. Anderson, so let's fix that right now. The Amy software is very forgiving and it does allow you to fix your errors. So we'll pick Mr. Anderson and proceed to the Squawk tab. The first Squawk is automatically created when the quote is generated 
And we'll go ahead and add a second squawk now. So we'll minimize first and then use the actions button. And for this we'll change the engine oil. And press the submit button. This job requires equipment so let's go ahead and add the Stratus ESG to the job. I can search my inventory by part number or description. This part is associated with squawk one and let's add a quantity of one. And this is part of the weight and balance, so go ahead and check it off here. The second squawk requires oil, but I'm gonna skip that. And let's go ahead and create a customer quote. Depending on how you run your shop, you may issue customer estimates or customer quotes. There actually is quite a bit to customer documents, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. So I'm gonna kind of gloss over this section. So here is our estimate for our customer. At the bottom is the footer. We skipped over footers when we looked at um, system setup. So this particular estimate includes our labor charge, our equipment that we'll be using in the job, and our shop consumable fee. So let's go ahead and issue this to our customer, and then we can send it to our customer via email. And here I'll just swap out the email address with mine so I'm not sending, sending out bogus emails. And then I want to show you what the history looks like. The history shows you the customer interaction during the life cycle of the quote or work order. So it's a really nice way of referencing what transpired. So the customer is uh, ready to proceed with the job. I'm going to convert the quote to a work order and then we're going to send the customer an invoice because this job requires a prepay there's a lot of equipment going into it so we're going to get a prepay from this customer for the full amount of the job for purposes of this video i'm actually issuing an invoice right now usually you will issue an invoice when the job is complete and you'll use pro forma invoices to get advance payment but again for purposes of the video demonstration I'm going to do that now so I can show you some of those features let's um, receive a payment from this customer and I am going to receive a payment for the full amount of 347110 and then I'm going to jump back into history so you can see the customer interaction life cycle for this particular job so we can see we've issued our estimate, we've issued an invoice, and we've received a payment. So let's get to work on this job. And the first thing I'm going to do is to go into the parts area and pick the transponder from my inventory. We had indicated previously that the transponder will be part of my weight and balance calculations, and we can see that here. So now let's go to the remove log, and we're going to take out the old TDR950. The TDR950 is in our inventory system, so when we type in either the description or the part number, our system recognizes it and populates the form with the unit weight, the proper description, and we just need to enter the serial number. We are going to be logging some labor hours, so let's go into user management and I'll give you a real quick tour of how that's laid out. So you can see I already have a list of users. If I click on the user Richard Simmons, I can go in and look at his certifications that have been defined to the system. We have user roles that you can define. So now that you've seen my users, let's hop back to the work order and charge some labor hours. So we'll assign this squawk to David. We'll indicate that it's a major 337 is required for this. We'll pick the uh, ATA chapter, perhaps David's doing training, we need to get OJT hours. And we'll log three hours to David. And we'll enter the work that was performed in the corrective action field. We're going to indicate that an inspection is required and we need Richard to come out and check our work. We'll be covering inspections in a different video. So we've concluded with the oil change and now we're gonna go in to the weight and balance part of the system and generate the weight and balance document. We have a video just for the weight and balance system, so I'm gonna kinda of gloss over it here. We can use the scale calculator if we are weighing the aircraft, or we can start with the received values. So for sake of brevity, we'll use the as received values of the aircraft. 
And now we'll add the longitudinal arm values for the installed items and for the removed item. Let's save and view our weight and balance report. We can archive the report to the work order. We can generate a final invoice for our customer. They've prepaid everything so they don't owe us any money. And then let's take a look at the customer documents history. And there is the weight and balance form that we archived to the work order as well as the payment information, the invoice, and the initial estimates that we sent out. So we have a full record of what took place for this work order. That concludes this video. Thank you for hanging in there, and we'll catch you on the next video.